But let's you know this this ball is kind of unique in that it's pretty it's pretty flat and it's very you know it's almost very straight. And again, this is you know, this is where in some places where you find that the you know the accuracy is is astonishing. And the wall's more is I think 39 inches deep going through. But the probably the wildest thing about it is that. As you travel along any one of these courses, like here and here, you'll see there's just a very, there's a tiny difference in, there's a little lift up here to that point, and why they didn't bother making the damn thing flat. There's a, I think there's a, you know, as far as I know, there's a logic to it though, and that's that, you know, there's no mortar involved, so if there was a massive earthquake to happen, if these were perfectly flat surfaces, then they, they would slide. But even with this tiny little bit of a difference, that causes this one, if, you know, if the earthquake wants it to move this way, it has to push the wall up in order to move. So that might have been a subtle thing that the megalithic builders put into the design of the building in order to earthquake proof. So we're now above Cusco, near Saxe Human, and um, this is this kind of really enhanced cave feature. And it's whether there was an actual crack here, or, or in fact it's um, been enhanced later, but there's definitely a lot of, um, of man-made markings and tool marks on this. <coughs> As we move in, you can see in particular these edges here. Let's see if I can get some light on them. And they just look. Like a cutting tool. What do you figure out? No, I'm just in awe at the moment. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, yeah you know, well, you'd you expect to see an angle grinder at work, except the power cord has to be pretty damn wide. Yeah. Is yeah. that? Maybe shorter skips. Yeah. I mean, something had a lot of pressure on that. Because it's not a board. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, because you would see the progressive movement. I mean, yeah, really. you use the angle grinder. You know, it's oh, like a quick something. Yeah, around. yeah exactly. This is one exactly. Long uh, try and get some light on that. Yeah. There you go. So you can see where this groove goes down, and then right on the edge, there's a layer of crystal. So this edge is, this particular edge here is natural, but then it's been mostly enhanced. You don't see a progression of, of cuts going in like the guys pushing, 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 pushing. Oh no, there's nothing natural about this. This is there's just there's a couple of features that are, but then they've been enhanced completely. Well, there is some oak or some iron ore yeah, exactly. in the stone, yeah. and so that looked like. Yeah, not in this one. So now we're moving. Yeah. 
<laughs> so we're at Machu Picchu now and we're just going to pan around the entire village so this is one of the better vantage points and uh, you have to queue for hours because people want to take thousands of photographs but do you blame them? And we'll move up. Okay, as you can see, this is the gateway at Tamaru Muru. sequence of outcrops yeah. chick running bird Well, I don't know. But there looks a distinct step in there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it does. Silastani, these are the, the actual chopper. Now, you can see the quite strange construction of them. Now, I was wondering if this is a reconstruction because it looks like an awful lot of concrete in that. These blocks are, as you can see, quite substantial. And these are the intriguing features. It's the inner surfaces. And it reminds me of you know the technology it's going of the golf ball. Bunku here, and I'm trying to take photographs of this, but it, it's just so hard because there really is so much here. And these blocks. The clamps. As you can see. Barely scratching the surface of Sir Chris doing some surface testing and calibration of these blocks. 